Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. There is a new Range Rover Sport and it is a stunner, isn't it? In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the spec and tech, obviously, and then talk about this design from the front side and a rear view and also compare it to the regular Range Rover so we can see what's actually the difference between the two. The new Sport is lo longer and sleeker than the outgoing model with its three inch longer wheelbase and all sports header for the US will be equipped with all wheel drive and an eight speed automatic transmission. You have four, not three, four trim levels to choose from. The familiar turbo six cylinders called the P360 SC with 355 horsepower. And then you have the P400 SC dynamic with 395 horsepower. There's also a plug-in hybrid called the P440E with 434 horsepower. And you also get a little, a, a bit of electric range with, for about 50 miles. If you want to drive this on all electric, you get 50 miles of that. The big boy in the lineup is called the P530. And that comes with a 4.4 liter V8 and 523 horsepower capable of launching itself to 60 miles per hour in just 4.3 seconds. There isn't a full sport EV just yet. You're gonna have to wait until next year when they're dropping that one. You know how important wheels are on any car. It can either make or break a design. So I'm happy to report that the new Range Rover Sport can now be equipped with massive 23 inch wheels to properly plant this beast on the ground which is much better than the standard 21 inches because let's face it nobody is gonna take the Range Rover Sports off-road they're all gonna go around in, in, in inside in cities and on the tarmac maybe out on a dirt road every now and then so you don't really need to put some massive beefy off-road tires on this thing. Go with the 23 inch, it's gonna look so much better. On the inside, we have a 13.7 inch digital gauge cluster, which I'm glad to see is housed by a properly designed and sculptured frame around these gauges and not just an iPad that's stuck on the dash. There's also a curved 13.1 inch touchscreen that has wireless charging and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Not bad, but also not cheap. The 23 Range Rover Sport starts at $84,350 and that's for the base SC trim all the way up to $122,850 for the V8 powered p530 and that would be for the first edition now let's jump into photoshop and let's have a look at this beauty of an suv i think this is a fantastic job both on the regular range rover up here and the new sport which takes this a step further in my opinion because the thing is i, I don't even think the range rover any looks like an off-roader anymore this definitely looks like a beverly hills car in my opinion, going back maybe just to, I would say just the previous generation and comparing it to this, this looks a lot more posh. This is not something you expect to see out in the wild like you kind of would with the previous generation. So turning this into an even more sportier version and more road focused version in the sport, it kind of makes sense since it is the Sport, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't because I think the Range Rover Sport, the Range Rover in this case, kind of looks like a Sport already. But let's have a look at what's different here. We have the headlights and the framing for the grill and all this stuff going on in the top half of this front fascia in the Sport. They shrunk it down and made it narrower and stretched it out to make it not only vi not only lower in the body because it sits lower since it's a sport but they visually want to plant it even more and make it wider looking than the range rover up there and they do that by squishing the front uh, graphics right here as you can see a lot thinner than we have on the range rover and look at the lower half of this front end the uh, the bumper part in the range rover it looks pretty classy you have one rectangle right here that houses the uh, the fog lights down here and some graphics in the middle very classy but then when we go into the range rover sport it all of a sudden becomes very angry down here you can see with these gaping air intakes going here and 
and this part in the bottom that we don't have on the ra regular Range Rover. It looks really good. It looks sporty, but at the same time, it looks very elegant and classy. And I love the flush surfaces that we have everywhere. There's not a single chamfer around the headlights or around the door handles or anything like that. It's a very clean surface. It looks like an EV just by looking at the internal combustion engine versions, in my opinion. Let's have a look at the side view and see what's going on here. Compare it to the regular Range Rover up top right here and the Sport again at the bottom. So this is, as you can see, the, the Range Rover that I have here is the longer wheelbase because you can see just the size of this rear door, how massive it is compared to the Sport, which is the normal version. Let's do green instead because I don't think red on red would really show up that well. So I'm just switching to green right here. So I think they had a theme going here when they did, when they designed the Range Rover Sport and how to separate it from the regular Range Rover. That, that is to squish, squ squish all the graphics more than uh, than is pr maybe necessary to lower the car as i said it is lower it sits lower than range rover but also with the graphics lower everything visually and graphically as much as possible and also lower it and make it wider you can see that in this graphic for example this is a very vertical graphic on the Range Rover, which kind of builds up this height of the Range Rover, and that's what you want in that version. But in the Sport, we want to have it sit lower. We want to be sleeker, look almost like a sports car. So what they did, a massive difference in the graphics that we have right here. This looks like something out of a sports car, not something that you would find on an SUV right here. Compare this graphic styling to the one on the Range Rover. You can definitely tell them apart by just looking at the side view. Then moving further back, we have the uh, stretched uh, graphic of the taillight that stretches into this chamfer right, that we have right here. This line that goes all the way from the shoulder line and kind of cuts in here and into what seems to be maybe a bit of a uh, resemblance of a bumper. I don't think it actually is a bumper because the thing that's gonna hit anything first here if you rever reverse is actually the diffuser down here. This is the piece that sticks out the furthest. So not really a proper bumper on that which feels pretty weird to not have a bumper on a Range Rover since they are supposed to be off-road vehicles. That's one thing that, that, I, that now that I think about it, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I... I do like the design of these things but you have to think that these are Land Rovers and Range Rovers. I think it's maybe becoming a little bit too urban here and losing the heritage of being one of the best, most capable off-roaders straight from the factory. These are probably still very, very capable off-road, but they just don't look like they are. They look like you don't, you don't want to have any branches or trees scratching these beautiful surfaces. They look almost like pieces of jewelry these days. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's still, it's a beautiful, gorgeous design. What I really like about the side profile of the Range Rovers specifically, and Land Rovers, most of them I would say, is the roof line. It slopes back. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Lincoln Aviator, I think it is. Or maybe it's the, not the Navigator, the one in between there. It has a very sloping roof line like this and create a super sporty design because it's thinner here. The, the height of the, the roof, specifically when you have it in a different color like we have here in black, it's lower here than it is in the back and it gives it like this forward motion that it's sweeping through the air and becomes thinner as the further you go back on this design. And then we have a couple of key lines. We have this line as I showed you already up here and we have this line in the bottom going into the rear as well. Still, very beautiful design, similar to what we have on the Range Rover, but a little bit more compressed and squeezed everything, the graphics and the proportions. Looking at the rear, I think this is probably the biggest change. The easiest way to tell these two apart is by looking at the graphics in the rear end. These are two very, very different graphics. Something that I have, we, I don't think we've seen this much of a difference between the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport in the taillight, uh, in the rear section of the car. I really like both of these. This looks very product designy, almost like an Apple design, which is a term that I absolutely can't stand from the days working as a designer when all the clients said, can we do something Apple designy? Everybody wanted Apple design. I don't know if that's still the case for designers, but when I worked as designers, that seems to be the golden standard for everything. It doesn't matter if you made a skateboard or if you were designing a toothbrush. But this looks 
looks sort of like it could be it could have been designed by Apple and it looks good it's a very clean design I really like the chamfer going around housing the graphics right here but as I said it looks a little too uh, tame or not as off-road not as rugged as I would hope the Land Rover the Range Rover to look like I really like how they treated the graphics on the sport here though just look how much wider it looks when you have the graphics stretching in such a thin horizontal line compared to the more vertical graphics that we have right here it's a really cool experiment and um, analysis to have these two to just by anal analyzing the graphics and how they made one model a lot sportier just by using different approach to the graphic design and i think that's what happened here we also have of course a, a lot aggressive more aggressive rear diffuser down here with two exhausts that are probably not going to exist on the ev but still it looks really good this black piece also cuts into the body color and reduces the overall height visually of this design so very cool design then it looks like we have two antennas up top there which is great i guess it has one for maybe radio one for wi-fi most likely and we still have this framing of the rear and graphics which is cut now by the number plate uh indent right there at the bottom that we don't have on the range rover and also this graphic the tail lights we have them now stretching around the corner of of the range rover sport that we don't have on the regular range rover it definitely like a very uh, distinct stop of the rear graphics on the Range Rover but here they stretch further and kind of connects with the shoulder line in a beautiful way overall I think Range Rover and Land Rover in general are doing a great job designing their cars but as I said I'm not sure if they're moving too far away from the off-road heritage and legacy that the Range Rover uh, models have and too much into this Beverly Hills LA Fashion Week style of cars. Let me know what you think about this new Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.